Hello, hockey fans. My name is David. Thought I would start this video on the evening of uh, Monday, 16th of May, 2022, 7.37 North American Eastern Time. Thought I would do is uh, mention that we have a Battle of Alberta in, in one, of, one of the conference semifinals. That's going to be so good. Oh, puck drop. It's supposed to be sometime on Wednesday, uh, between, you know, somewhere between 9.35 and 9.45 North American Eastern Daylight Time. So that's you know, a couple of hours earlier in the Mountain Time Zone where, you know, all, the, all those series are going to take place. It's going to be up and down Alberta. I'm not sure what the name of the road is that separates Calgary and uh, the main road that separates Calgary from Edmonton. But whatever it is, is it's going to be so important because we have a Canadian conference we're going to have a Canadian team in a conference final for the first time since the Winnipeg Jets, again, in 2018, played against the Golden Knights. That's going to be so good to that's going to be so good to have after a, a postseason of disappointment <clears throat> from the Leafs, my hometown Leafs. In the Eastern Conference, the Leafs were the only team to make the postseason among them, the Ottawa Sanders, and the Montreal Canadiens. And yeah, Leafs and Habs did play each other in the postseason last, uh, you know, last spring, last May. And uh, yes, there were no conferences and no teams got flipped on their heads. And very unusually, we had, at least with respect to the Habs, you know, there were some matchups that would, you know, that would, under modern, under, under typical playoff, uh, form, under the typical playoff format, not be possible. As such as we have, you know, in, <clears throat> in terms of the Habs, we had uh, against Winnipeg Jets, which would not have been possible in almost any other season because of the two teams being in opposite conferences. Uh, then the Golden Knights, the Habs played the Golden Knights in what would, in the, in, in what would ordinarily have been a conference final, but no conference, so it was just a Stanley Cup semifinal. So yeah, another Western Conference team. And in the conference final, the other conference final, we had uh, the New York Islanders and Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay. You know, that may be expected. But to have the Habs and Lightning? Wow. From the same division, from the, from the Atlantic division, but in the Stanley Cup final, very unusual. Obviously, the Leafs had a traditional Eastern Conference opponent. A traditional divisional opponent. All right, so, <clears throat> you know... So it's been kind of, you know, following the, during the salary cap era, Leafs have played, you know, Leafs in 2013 played the Bruins in the opening round. 2017, it was the Capitals. 2018, the Bruins. 2019, the Bruins. 2020, in the relevant opening round, the Columbus Blue Jackets. It's a quarterfinal qualification round. In 2021, it was the Habs. 2022, the Lightning. So, so the Capitals were a, you know, you know, played an inter-divisional opponent. Um, you know, more because the Leafs ended up in a wild card spot. You know, in the second wild card spot, the Capitals ended up in first place in the Eastern Conference in terms of points. So that was <clears throat> that was the way thing. That was the way the cookie crumbled. Put it, uh, you know, put it, you know, that way. <clears throat> So 2018-2019 were as well the, you know, Atlantic Division. Leafs finished third each of those, each of those seasons. You know, in each of those relevant seasons, and the Bruins finished second. So Leafs were faced an intra divisional opponent. 2020, well, 2020 is an exception because of no points percentage, and the Leafs finished eighth. Columbus Blue Jackets ninth, and you know, tiebreaker was on regulation wins. Leafs had more than the Blue Jackets. 2021 was well, the North Division, but a traditional, you know, but it was not just a divisional opponent in terms of that division, but also a traditional Atlantic Division opponent. And a traditional Atlantic Division opponent. So we have, well, we have seven playoff series, and just two of them have contained opponents from outside of whatever division in which the Leafs based. So <clears throat> these should have figured out how to beat these teams. They didn't. And what they need, they need a lot of things. 
I mean, I've listened to all, you know, all the, you know, all the radio shows, which I predicted would, would, you know, would be dominated by, you know, in large part by coverage of this first round loss by the Leafs. No surprise there. Because that was, you know, again, it was an embarrassing performance, Game 7. But the Leafs lost that, you know, in I did a video or put out earlier, you know, a few days ago or whatever. It was because the Leafs lost, you know, lost game, you know, because you know, the Leafs, you know, on the, you know, because the defense was not very good. The Leafs gave up 23 goals. So they ended up, you know, losing too many, you know, they ended up not being, you know, Ended up, uh, you know, scoring la- scoring after their opponent too many games. And they ended up losing four of those games. I mean, when it comes to... Let's see here. So what about the... Uh, you know... <clears throat> so what happened in terms of the Oilers and Flames? So when it came to scoring first, you know, like the Oilers and Flames, the Leafs, ended up winning any game which they scored first. The Oilers ended up winning all four games which they scored first. <clears throat> Whereas the, um, you know, the Flames and Leafs each won two games out of two. Flames, in five games which they, in which their opponent scored first, Flames picked up two wins. Leafs picked up only one. That slight difference went the Flames moved on, the Leafs didn't. And, uh, all right, so let's see here. Where do I do <clears throat> so, the Calgary Flames were outscored 25 to 15. It's not very good. Uh, but again, <clears throat> but the state score goals when it mattered. You know, if the Flames are going to beat the Oilers, they're going to have to stop allowing so many goals. Problem is, the Leafs don't have that chance anymore. Because they're out. They allowed, I mean, the, the, well, the Flames allowed two more goals than the Leafs, but scored fewer. But the, but the Flames, you know, the Flames won one nothing. It was a low scoring series. The Oilers, <coughs> the Oilers end up being <coughs> outscoring their opposition 27 to 17. Okay, the Oilers allowed 17 goals, so slightly under two and a half goals per game on average. The Leafs allowed, on average, over three. So, the Leafs, the only battles in the postseason the Leafs seem to have won have been those of Ontario, between, you know, with the Senators. Um, from the, you know, following the 2002 Stanley Cup playoffs. 2003, the Leafs didn't face the Senators in the opening round. The Leafs lost. 2004, the Leafs faced the Ottawa Senators in the opening round. Leafs won, but they didn't win the end next round. And you know, and, and those playoff series the Leafs have lost. They've uh, they haven't faced. You know, there hasn't been a battle of Ontario. There hasn't been a playoff battle of Ontario, and the Leafs haven't won. That's been an issue. Whereas the Flames and Oilers didn't need the Battle of Alberta to get past the opening round, and that's important. And that's what's you know, the Leafs have over relied on beating one team in the postseason. And when the Leafs haven't faced off against that one team in the first round, or whatever opening round, then they failed. That's been the difference here. And it's been throughout their Eastern Conference history. 1999, the Leafs didn't face Senators. They won two, at least won two rounds. 2000, the Leafs faced the Ottawa Senators in the opening round, but didn't win the next one. 2001, the Leafs faced the Ottawa Senators in the opening round, but didn't advance. And we didn't advance beyond the next round. 2002, no, 2001, and, okay, we have 2000, 2001, 2003, 2004. So, four of the six postseason runs the Leafs had, four or six uh, years in which they qualified for the postseason in the Eastern Conference for the first six times, the Leafs ended up, uh, you know, being the Sanders in a playoff series, but no other team. It's been a high, highly problematic, and it's come back to bite the Leafs over and over and over again. Whereas, you know, I'm excited for the Battle of Alberta. I may even watch the Battle of Florida. You know, see if the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning can be knocked off in, you know, in a conference semifinal. It would be nice to see a new Stanley Cup champion, but, but again, hopefully that Stanley Cup champion will be a Canadian team. 
Obviously, the Canadian, Canadian team has already qualified for a conference final. The only question will be whether that team will be the Flames or the Oilers. I'll root for the winner of that series. I have no horse in the race. You know, I mean, it's a good thing that there's a battle of Alberta. Because my hometown leads are out. Who knows what's going to happen in the offseason. Anyone's guess. But there's no doubt that big changes will have to be made to the roster. Or at least, you know, at least to shore up the defense. Thicken the goaltending depth. And there's not a lot of cap room. But still, we'll see what happens to management. But certainly, Kyle Dubas and Brandon Shanahan need to be given the boot. They've tried over and over and over again. Their strategy has not worked. It's time for change. Question is whether Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, the ownership group of the Leafs, Raptors, and a few other sports teams, is prepared to listen. Because let's hope that it does. Because I don't like what, you know, I'm concerned about what will happen if Dubas and Shanahan get to stay. Because bring back the same core, it didn't work. They tried too many times, you know, four times in a row, four failures. And the Leafs now have, you know, among, uh, you know, uh, NHL, Major League Baseball, and NBA teams, uh, the longest streak of consecutive losses of, of, eliminate, of, of do or die elimination games, or of the final games that have been do or die elimination ones, among those leagues, five in a row. Secondly, the Leafs have the longest active playoff series win drought in the NHL. 17 seasons already. Two more than the Buffalo Sabres. Florida Panthers you know, snapped their playoff series win drought uh, late last week. We'll see what happens in the offseason. Hopefully, there will be those changes that are necessary. I mean, there may very well be changes. But the difference is, between teams you know, that succeed in the playoffs and those that don't, are that for the Leafs, such changes are more urgent because they were expected to get in and go on at least win one playoff round. But because they didn't do that, those changes would have to be necessary. Anyway, go Leafs, go. Uh, and I'm going to root. Go Flames, go. Go Oilers, go.